Amongst the trees I fly, you might see me go by. I have sapphire wings, I'm also a delicate thing. I go near bushes and trees as I fly in the breeze. What am I? I'm a holly blue butterfly. Hi, this is Graham Birchall. I'm going to read my poem Peacock Butterfly, Nymphalis Eo. Named after show-off birds I saw in clearings in Assam. I should call this one Four Eyes. Rude, I know. Something that might have hurt, encourage white tears over a hot frown. And to be rude again, sorry. Perfection once pinned and taped on a setting board until rigor mortis is slightly off now. One antenna is lost. It's lopsided and deaf in one ear. Such a short life. But if it hadn't found the back of a lepidopterous net, it would have sought other shadows as nights lengthened and air chilled. It would have offered us its dark side. I shut in a shed corner above tins of nails and stowed hoe and rake, there to marinate in odours of creosote, to wait stinking in spring, to damage wings battering the one window or ripping itself free from an old web. And when the shed door finally opened, freedom would have been undignified, arthritic, sensing in its primordial way that its world had changed, that it was clinging rather than thrusting air and light not quite as it had been. They'd follow a desire to rest more often, but to show off colour, say, look, I'm still here, even though there'd be rips between the veins and the wing's corner hanging, even though others of its ilk that passed would be fresher, alien, never seen before, orange tips and brimstones. Above all this, it would recognise something unfulfilled, a potent need to find a partner for its last dance. Instar. I stumble over islands of tussocks, among bog squelch and gurgle, a clatter of stream nearby, tricklings from under boot. But to see butterflies, I need butterfly vision. Switch focus from what's below, look further, across a small immensity, over reeds and willows, to blue buttons, dropwort, ragged robin, where flight conjures itself, rising and dipping, or was it a flicker of light? And whatever it might be, I flounder toward until there it is, smaller than I remember, a gasp in my throat. This phase is the briefest, the longest being the team of black larvae inside a spun web, fattening on devil's bit scabies, when wings like light through stained glass weren't even a dream. Towards the end of every summer, butterflies begin to enter the house. They fly up the stone spiral staircase to hide under my bed where they overwinter. And in the spring, they fly back out again. I wonder whether this routine is inscribed in them somewhere, or if they tell each other about it. The house is over 500 years old, so they may have been doing this for centuries. According to entomologists, butterflies do not feel pain. I take it personally. It's all I can do. Hovering at the door, barefoot on flagstone, still in the clothes I sleep in. An old summer dress, once loved, not good enough to be seen out in. 
found myself in the supermarket yesterday, still in my nightdress. I think I got away with it. Someone he knows comes down the aisle. He slips his hand out of mine. It's getting colder. I struggle with this. Heavy back door of a morning, taken off its hinges and turned around to open backwards. And here he is. Wingtip keys my cheek. Not a violence, no. So rare an encounter. I feel blessed as if some saint has come calling. Or Jesus asking for water. Revelation slams into me, steel pin through the chest, attaching me to him. Through the mind and out through the throat. So that his is the only name I can answer with. Urgent, furious, hard mouth parts turned away. He avoids my kiss. It's no surprise. I'm unstructured. Unlike him. Physicists reel at the wonder. How he shapes the light. Breaks down incident light into reflected waves. Interfering with each other. Destroying, reinforcing different wavelengths. In different directions. To appear bright. The dark is mine alone. And each night I dredge it up. Breaking down to base substance, disgust and spew primal over the nice clean sheets like some bloody harpy, hemorrhaging rages, fevers and fears. I seem to be torn somewhere, somewhere inside. Maybe he just needed me to open the door. I follow him into the bedroom. I, I always do to our bed, the bed gone cold, the bed we don't touch in. Leave him alone, warning a dry paper fricative of a folded away love note. Songless I lose sight of him as he joins the fret-winged choir under the struts for their overwintering sleep. There must be a brief ache for the renounced sky. I keep vigil with a delicately held faith in resurrection for a chemical miracle. I remember the delirious bruising, the imprint of his searching all over my body. For me, when he couldn't pin me down, in mid-air as I was then. Was that another lover?